practice uh, in my laptop just for spare, I'm just using a sparse file of my existing file system. Uh, this is a good way to experiment with ZFS. Uh, Linux, of course, does not have a truncate command. Uh, if you want to create a sparse file on Linux, you need to use dd, uh, dd if equals something, of equals something else, seek equals something, uh, and then start equals something else, uh, and then you need to add some options, and then that may only work on some versions of Linux. Uh, so if you want a, a pleasant Unix experience, I can recommend FreeBSD. Uh, so I've just created a sparse file of uh, two terabytes on my laptop, which has a much smaller disk, uh, and I will create, uh, actually I'll make a memory disk out of it, big minus a minus b. Uh, on Linux, if you want to create a, uh, a loop back to a RAM disk, you need to use, <coughs> I don't know what you need to use, but uh, it's a lot more complicated than this. So I'll create a cool. So this is basically, I, uh, the first command is I have gone to the shop and I have bought a hard disk. The second command is I have plugged the hard disk into my computer. Um, so I'll create a tank and I will create this disk. Uh, how long should this take? How long should formatting a disk take? It's a two terabyte disk. How long should it take? It should not take any time at all. Uh, if you're using a traditional Unix file system, it might take a week or two, um, but it, it does not take any time at all. It, it, that, that's it. You, you now have a ZFS uh, file system. So if I do zpool list, I have got tank, it's uh, just about two terabytes, uh, about 512, uh, 520 kilobytes have been used for little pointers going everywhere, and don't worry about the rest. Uh, ZFS will tell you uh, the capacity of your disk, and ZFS also has deduplication, which I'll talk about a little bit, but not much. Uh, and ZFS tells you how healthy your disk is. Right, easy. Um, so, for a traditional Unix file system, after you have formatted your disk, created the file system, you still need to remember to go and add it to FS tab and then mount it. With ZFS, this is not the case, because ZFS does it all for you. Um, ah, why can't I select this line? There we go. So, ZFS, after I created it, ZFS has just automatically gone and added this file system for me has gone and mounted it. Nice, because ZFS makes the reasonable assumption that having gone to the shop, bought a disk, plugged it into my computer, and added it to a storage pool, I might want to go and use it. Uh, so ZFS does not does not need you to go and do anything else uh, in the background. Actually, in Linux, uh, if we use ZFS, so you don't have to use any LVM. LVM is just nothing official with ZFS. Oh, LVM. Oh, yes, LVM. You are used to ZFS or ZPool, LVM, just you can forget the LVM. Is it okay? Yes, yeah, I don't know what LVM is. I think it's about, I think it's about LVM. <laughs> uh, I, I don't use Linux. I, I, I'm a happy man. Uh, I, I use FreeBSD. I, I, live, I live in a world of happiness, and I don't have time for a finger. Um, so uh, ZFS has gone and mounted my file system for me. And as you see, so the, uh, all of the normal Unix commands just work, right? So there's nothing magical about ZFS when it comes to finally being a file system. If I want to go and create a file, um, um, if I want to go and create a file, I can just do that. So all so ZFS is just a normal file system. Uh, under, you know, underneath all of this volume manager and, and secret snapshotting uh, that goes on in the background. So you go out and buy a disk, you add it to your pool, and ZFS will automatically uh, make it available to you like a normal Unix file system. Yeah, uh, nothing to be afraid of. Um, I can go back to my presentation. Right, so that was creating a pool. Um, if you want to see how the pool is doing, Zpool status will tell you this in 
in a friendly way. All of this output is also, you can add a little flag to Zepool status to give you JSON output or XML output or something else which is easier for computers to deal with. In ZFS, by default, it tries to be uh, easy for humans to use. You, know, you type a status command, you look at the screen and go, ah, this is what's going on. Uh, but parsing this in a shell script is a pain. So ZFS has output formatters to give you the outputs in JSON or uh, other ways. Um, Zpool lists shows you a little bit more of a compressed uh, overview of all of the pools you have in your file system. Uh, having said that, in general, the vast majority of systems will have exactly one pool uh, because the file systems are so much more flexible than uh, the pools. So more on that in a moment. So that's showing the status. Um, ZFS, I mentioned, has uh, performance. It wants to be fast. Uh, and ZFS keeps its, uh, keeps its own statistics for how fast it's going, because ZFS does not trust disks. So uh, there's a ZFS command called iostat, which uh, every second or so will show you how much data uh, ZFS has seen coming in from the disk <coughs> and going out to the disk. Uh, and this is on the file system level, so it's, uh, it's not like gstat or vmstat, which will tell you what the disk is saying. ZFS is telling you, I'm the file system. I know I've seen this data, and I know how fast I've seen it. Uh, if this data disagrees with anything else, anything else is lying to you. Uh, so if you suspect uh, performance problems in your file system, uh, the first thing to do is do zpool iostat and compare it to the outputs of your RAID controller or your disk controller and then figure out which one is lying, and that's the one you need to replace. That's, makes sense. Um, right. So that was so so far we've created a file system with one disk. If we now uh, go out to the shop uh, and instead of buying one disk, we buy two disks, uh, and we want to use both of them, and we don't really care uh, about redundancy. So basically, what we are creating is RAID. Rate level zero, I suppose. Or no, no, rate level one is a mirror. Rate level zero is just striping. Yes. So if we wanted to do the model equivalent of rate level zero, where we have a whole bunch of disks and we stripe the data across it and we don't care about any kind of redundancy, we can do this with ZFS. So instead of going out and buying uh, one disk, uh, where's my thing? Uh, let's destroy this pool again. So pool. Oops. Uh, there we go. So we've gone out and bought one disk, uh, but now let's go to the shop and buy a second disk. Um, oops. Uh, oops. We've gone out to the shop and we have bought two disks instead of one disk. Uh, how do you think we might want to create this uh, tank. So we do zpool create again, zpool create tank, right? Uh, and we have two disks. So we just add two disks. Um, uh, ah. So now we have a pool with <coughs> two disks. In it. This is the <coughs> equivalent to RAID 0. If either of these disks fails, your entire ZFS. <laughs> no, it's RAID 0. RAID 1 is a mirror. There's no mirror. Yeah. This is just this is a pool with two disks. Right? So if, um, if either of these disks fails, your entire storage pool is uh, toast. You, you need to go and reload backups. That's not really cool, is it? Um, so instead, if you have two disks, what ZFS allows you to do, uh, let's just destroy it again. Uh, what ZFS allows you to do uh, is if you have two or more disks or a multiple of two disks, uh, ZFS can mirror. And how do you mirror on ZFS? You just tell it to mirror. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I don't know how you create a mirror with, what's it called, LDM? 
there's probably four or five different commands which you need to. Mm -hmm. it doesn't support Linux. Oh, it doesn't support Linux. Well, okay. Great, great. So why are people using Linux anyway? Uh, so uh, ZFS, you know, you went out and bought two disks, so it's reasonable that you might want uh, a mirror rather than uh, just a bunch of disks and the chance of a failing file system increasing linearly with the number of disks you add. Uh, so instead you want to mirror your disks, right? So we just add the word mirror between there and um, uh, suddenly uh, we have a mirror, mirror one. called, well, mirror zero, uh, sitting on these two disks. Right, that's easy. Uh, what if we just run out of storage on uh, this file system? Uh, we can uh, actually make sure I'm uh, going to my slides in the right order. Um, <coughs> so, right, so that was a mirror. We just added uh, the word mirror, and ZFS goes and automatically creates a mirror. Uh, the downside of a mirror, of course, is that the total uh, available storage is half of the number of bytes you have on your disks, right? You have the, uh, and you need to, use, well, you preferably use two disks of the same size because your mirror is the size of the smallest one. If there's no space available for extra blocks, then there just won't be space. So uh, a mirror uh, just is rate one. Fine. Um, all right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, what was I doing? Yes. Um, so, I have gone out to the shop uh, with my terminal. Uh, I have gone out to the shop. My file system is currently full. Uh, it, does, it doesn't look very full. Um, my, my file system doesn't look, look very full, but I feel that having two terabytes available on a two terabyte file system is it's getting a bit full. Uh, so, I go out to the shop and I buy another okay. disk. Let's say I will buy a three terabyte disk because uh, time has passed and two terabyte disks are just no longer available. Uh, so I go out and I buy a new three terabyte disk. So I come home from the shop uh, and I uh, plug it into my, uh, my computer. There we go. I have bought a shiny new disk. How do you think I would add this disk to my volume? Any guesses? Yeah, well, just, well, let, let's assume we just stripe it, but how would I go about it practically? Uh, what would I type at my computer to add this storage? I have to type it down below. No, 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 this is the 21st century. Real time. <laughs> we, have, we, we have hot pluggable disks. We yeah, just plug this disk in, no sparks, we ignore all the sparks. Uh, how do we add it to our storage? How about we just type it to add? Slide somewhere. Um, we just say z pool add. Um, oops, z pool add. W where do we want to add it? Well, we want to add it to our tag. And what do we want to add? We just want to add def md2. Oops. Ah, but zfs complains. Why does zfs complain? ZFS complains because ZFS is friendly to systems administrators. ZFS is telling you that by doing this, you are going to shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, what, uh, what is the problem here? Uh, ZFS knows that your file system is currently a mirror of two disks. And ZFS knows that uh, this pool currently is reliable. Uh, if any of these disks fails, I will keep working as if nothing happened. If one day my systems administrator comes up to me and says, well, let's just add a disk and hope for the best, uh, ZFS will tell you, uh, no, you probably don't want to do this because you, this, by doing this, the reliability of your file system will decrease. And you will not know which of your data is on the mirror and which of the data is on this one lonely disk. So ZFS will not let you shoot yourself in the foot. There are ways to overwrite this, but I'm not going to tell you how. Uh, if, you want, if you want to do this, you should, you know, it, it should hurt to find out because it's going to hurt once it breaks. 
Um, ZFS will try very hard not to shoot yourself in the foot. So that feature is coming. Uh, Reader expansion. Uh, VDEV expansion, uh, expansion is different. The VDEV expansion will make it easier to shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> um, but so when you have a mirror of disks, what you generally do is you don't just buy one disk. Uh, you go out and buy two more disks. Um, and then you can add a mirror <coughs> of those three disks. Ta-da! So we just added two disks to our file system, and ZFS is happy with this. So how many disks are in our file system now? Four, four right? The full status. So we now have four disks in our file system, uh, but we have two mirrors. So what does that mean for the reliability of our file system? So um, if this disk fails, everything is still fine, right? If this disk fails and <laughs> this disk fails, everything is fine. If this disk and this disk both fail, everything is not fine. So creating two mirrors is fine, provided that your disks are nice enough to fail in an interleaved order, which is not always uh, going to be the case. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm going through this rather quickly because I only have uh, another hour. Um, so, uh, but we have to do nothing to grow our file system, right? So if we go back to my, uh, my terminal, actually, which is easier, uh, I just, uh, I have one meter of two terabyte disks and one meter of three terabyte disks. How much storage space do I have in total? Five terabyte. Four? What? Five terabyte. <laughs> Five terabyte, thank you. <laughs> Yes, two plus three equals five, <laughs> even on Sunday. <laughs> so that will list. I have 4.9 terabytes, which you know is good enough for government work, right? It's five terabytes, and uh, and automatically my file system. So this is this is the ZFS layer. This is just the Unix layer. The file system has automatically increased in size as well. There is nothing I have to do as a systems administrator to make this storage magically larger. I, I didn't have to type any arcane commands. I did not have to sacrifice any chickens. Everything just worked out of the box by magic. Is it added, added, added yes. Is that automatically? Yes. Wow. Isn't that nice? Excellent. Because what, you know, what, else, what else would you want to do with a disk? What, what other reasonable assumptions can a computer make about someone who's just added a disk to a pool? Of course you want the file system to expand. Right? <laughs> there is nothing else that could you, you could possibly want with this disk unless you are really keen on seeing blinking lights in your computer <laughs> and not using this for it. So ZFS tries to make your life easy for you. Uh, you can tell it that you don't want it to do this. If, if you feel like typing everything by hand, you can tell ZFS, eh, please don't expand for me. Uh, please don't automatically create file systems for me and then you get to suffer commensurately. Uh, but by default, out of the box, ZFS tries to be friendly to the systems administrator and tries to prevent the systems administrator from shooting himself in the foot or between the eyes. Um, so ZFS will try really hard to just work, and ZFS will try really hard to keep working. Uh, but uh, like everything else in Unix, uh, ZFS uh, just sells you rope. So if you want just enough rope to hang yourself, ZFS does provide <coughs> all of those features. Uh, and you can look them up in the documentation. Uh, so that was just adding storage to a pool. Uh, note that you cannot remove storage from a pool. Uh, once you have expanded your pool, you cannot shrink it. Uh, there is some ongoing work to make shrinking possible, but in general, you should assume that uh, adding data or adding disks to a pool is, a, uh, is, is final. You are committed to having more data now. Uh, if you want to go and use this disk for something else later, you'll need to make backups mm -hmm. and restore all the smaller pools. But that, in the real world, that is not a problem. Uh, if I want to uh, replace any disk, uh, if you want to replace a disk, uh, yes, we are coming to that, uh, I think. Uh, we 
that's not going to be this. Uh, that's not. Uh, uh, do you want to do the replacing first, uh, or um, uh, that's going to be replacing because uh, someone asked? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I like to go through in uh, in, in what order. Um, so, okay. So imagine, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes. So imagine uh, terrible things happen, right? So let's uh, let's just do. Uh, let's take. Th let's shut the computer down. We have shut the computer down. Uh, we shut our server down. Our disks are idle, and uh, and and everything is okay. And we are putting our server rack into a truck. And we are driving it down the motorway. Uh, the motorway, the road is not in great shape, uh, and our disks are rattling a bit. Um, and um, uh, <coughs> is that this eruption which is good? Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, let's do. So we're driving our server uh, down the road, and the disks are rattling, and uh, because spinning rust does not like being rattled, our one of our disks, our first disk, uh, about fifty megabytes of our disk become corrupt by rattling it down the motorway. So one of our disks has become damaged. Right, we've just damaged our disk. It's a lot easier to damage our disk with DD than it is to damage it by you know, putting it on a truck and driving it down the motorway. Uh, it's, it's also a lot easier to just destroy one disk rather than all of them at the same time. Um, so a little bit higher up in my command line history here, we had a healthy disk, right? Everything is healthy. And we have this mirror, and we have this other mirror. Now we have gone and destroyed uh, data on one of the mirrors. Right. Come to our, we come to our new data center, and we turn our server on. Boom, boom, boom. We turn the server on. There we go. The server just turns on. It, there's nothing, there's no complaints. Everything is happy. Uh, but what if we look at our status? Ah, ooh, oh no. Our status. This tells us something new. What does our data tell us? Um, our data tells us that one of our devices has experienced an unrecoverable error. Right. So ZFS is gone, and when importing the pool, ZFS is checked. What 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 does the data look like? And one of the disks said something unexpected. It actually said twenty one unexpected things. So 21 failures on this disk. When your disk starts to have 21 failures, it is time to replace it. Uh, ZFS tells you that, okay, fine, this is not a real problem because ZFS will just keep going. We have enough, um, we have enough backups for, of, of our blocks to keep going without any difficulty. Uh, at this stage, there are two options, depending on how much you like your data uh, and how much you trust your disks. Uh, if you know uh, that you have just corrupted this disk by writing random data to it, and you know that the disk is fine, you can tell ZFS <laughs> that um, the, there's no real error. So you can do zpool clear, zpool clear. Um, oops. Uh, you can do this, zpool clear tank uh, MD0, which says, yeah, I know that disk is a bit flaky, but I like to live dangerously, and I don't really care. Uh, and then ZFS will go, okay, sure, nothing happens. Um, nothing happened. This, everything is fine. This disk is, this disk is good. If, on the other hand, uh, you are a little bit smarter than that, uh, let's do that again. Uh, <laughs> export tank. So we've just done the same thing. Uh, this time there were only 17 errors because that's how random corruption works. It is random. 
Uh, it could have even been zero because that's random. Um, if you are smart, though, you realize that oh no, this disk, eh, this disk is, is not uh, is not doing well. Uh, so we're going to replace this disk. Um, so what we what we do is we take that one disk offline uh, from the tank. MD0. So we have taken this one disk away. This is assuming that your, your hardware supports hot plugging disks without sparks coming out of your system. Uh, if your system does not support uh, replacing disks without sparks, uh, you would shut the machine down and then replace the disk and then bring it up again. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm just doing it this way. So now I have gone and let's, uh, yeah, let's just replace our disk, uh, so it was disk zero. So we have taken the disk away, we have thrown it in the shredder, uh, and we've gone to the shop and we buy a new disk. Um, to make it interesting, let's buy, um, actually, yes, to make it interesting, let's, let's buy a larger disk. So the original disk was two terabytes large, but our shop does not want to sell us two terabyte disks anymore. The only thing in stock is a four terabyte disk. <coughs> uh, so we have just bought a four terabyte disk. Right. We have replaced our two terabyte disk with a shiny new four terabyte disk. Uh, let's plug it into our computer. Uh, so we have bought a shiny new disk. Uh, ZFS still does not know about it. So ZFS currently thinks that this disk is missing, that we've just you know, plugged in a new disk. Now we need to tell ZFS that this is the new disk we want. At this stage, we do need to tell ZFS manually because it's possible that we have a whole bunch of disks sitting in a machine and ZFS can't know which one of those disks we want to use to replace our command. So now what we can do, uh, we just say zpool replace in tank, um, uh, there we go, we've just done zpool uh, replace, so we've told ZFS that uh, we have replaced this disk. If, we, if our device node had a different node number, uh, we could have said replace MD0 with MD6 or whatever, but that, that's just an aside. Uh, at this stage, the Z-pool status, oops, Z-pool status, you can spell it correctly. Uh, Z-pool status tells us uh, everything is fine, we have replaced the disk, and Z-pool also tells you that it has resilvered, which is ZFS speak for uh, made everything fine, uh, a total of 68.5 kilobytes, so a huge amount of data, uh, with no errors on whatever the time it was. So, uh, and you saw how long that took, right? So the command line came back immediately. Uh, if there were actually four terabytes of data uh, on this disk, uh, ZFS would just continue to work while in the background the file system was rebuilding. So you took your, uh, your server down the motorway, you corrupted your data, you brought it online, and it's still online immediately while you're replacing this disk in the background. You don't have to wait for it. Your users don't have to sit there and going, when is my mail coming back? When is my mail coming back? Uh, because ZFS will just, it knows it has enough copies, and in the background, it will repair this MD0 disk. Of course, if while it's repairing, MD1 decides to blow up, you're not going to have a good day. Uh, if while it's repairing, MD3 blows up, that's fine. ZFS is totally happy with that because MD3 has a copy in MD2. Does that make sense? Everyone happy with this? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Does it support hot stairs? Yes, ZFS supports hot stairs. Uh, I don't remember the command line, but yes, ZFS supports hot stairs and well, cold stairs are easy. Cold stairs are just device nodes. Uh, you can mark uh, a disk as, as a spare for the mirror where uh, if one of the nodes uh, disappears, uh, ZFS will automatically pick, uh, replace it with another. 
Uh, now, one uh, interesting question to ask you. Uh, originally, MD0 was a two terabyte disk. I have replaced it with a four terabyte disk. How much space is on the mirror with a two terabyte, a two terabyte disk and a four terabyte disk? How big is this mirror? Two terabytes, right? So there's two terabytes of wasted space on this piece of spinning rust. This, you need to keep this in mind. The, the mirror uh, is only going to be the size of the, uh, of the smallest node. Um, how do you think we can expand the size of this mirror? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you could do that, but it would not be reliable. Uh, ZFS, it's the same disk. Right, it's the same disk, and ZFS would not know that uh, it's the same disk. Uh, so ZFS is not going to stop you. So if, say, you create okay. two partitions on the four terabyte disk, one.